Now, what defines a sports car? Now, according to the most informative website on the internet, well, the second most informative website on the internet, Wikipedia, Zigwills Philippines being the first one, of course, it's a performance-oriented car, usually two-seater or two-by-two, two, that's made and built for performance, handling, top speed, and acceleration. They forgot one thing, though, the looks. What's going on, guys? Roy Robles here from Zigwheels.ph and today we'll be reviewing the Subaru Boxer Rear Wheel Drive Zenith BRZ. Now one of the most important features of owning a sports car is that it's got to look good. Now, starting with the front fascia of the Subaru BRZ, if you're mistaking this for the Toyota GR86, then I'm not, I'm not gonna blame you because these two cars are actually twins. Those are co-developed between Subaru and Toyota. But there are a couple of subtle differences that you might actually miss if you don't look at it closely. For example, the grill right here. The grill on the GR86 is actually quite bigger, uh, letting in a lot more air than the Subaru BRZ. But in this case right here, the BRZ grill looks a lot more focused, it's thinner, kind of gives you quite a smile, especially when going down the road, doesn't it? You got two air vents on each side, which is which probably Subaru intends to make sure that you cool down those front brakes right here. You have these LED headlamps with a BRZ badge. These headlamps are actually adaptive as well, so they adjust itself to what direction you're steering the steering wheel at. You've noticed these hunches right here, right here on the headlamp. These are a nice indication, especially when you're driving, it's for you to know where your car really is, especially when you're squeezing through tight spaces. This front end right here makes you proud that you're owning a Subaru BRZ. No, no not just that, I'm proud of owning a legit sports car. And I love this blue color, very Subaru. As I've mentioned earlier, the Subaru BRZ is a love child of both Toyota and Subaru. That means it's got some parts and features that make it look great, make it fast, but at the same time practical and usable as well. For example, you got these bubble tops on top of the roof here to add a little bit more headroom for the passengers inside. You also got these side vents right here that follow through with the air vents on the front to make sure that the air passes through nicely through those huge front brakes. You got the nice, powerful, muscular front fenders right here that flow all the way to the bottom and then terminate all the way to the back of the rear fenders, giving it a really muscular feel and muscular look. But it's not all about muscles. Like I said, it's all about usability. These things have 18-inch alloy wheels. They're gunmetal in the case of the BRZ, but the GR86 has them in black and you have a nice and respectable ground clearance. Now, Subaru understands its audience. People who are gonna buy the Subaru BRZ might or might not tune their cars. Check out those dual exhaust ports right there below. Uh, these are functional, by the way, and they're housed in these really large holes. They understand that they'll be, soon enough, some owners might want to replace them, and then you have a lot of clearance for you to put in larger exhausts because the, to be honest, the Subaru BRZ might not be as, uh, as loud as you want to be. It performs quite well, but it doesn't really sound that good. But we're gonna check out inside during the drive because Subaru has solved that in, in a way, has <laughs> solved that. Now, when the Subaru BRZ was first released, a lot of people were kind of apprehensive with the overall look. A lot of people loved those circular headlamps on the previous generation. But these ones right here, these crab claw tail lamps actually grow quite well, especially in time. I mean, look at it, especially at night, these head, these tail lamps leaving you right behind on the expressway, it's gonna be awe-inspiring in a way. And uh, I really dig them. Now, one useful thing in the Subaru BRZ though, is this nice button right here that lets you open up the rear tailgate. And once you open it up, gives you access to all this space. This is pretty practical. It's not gonna be the most spacious uh, trunks in anywhere, any stretch of the imagination. But hey, and in fact, it's not, this huge wheel is actually gonna be detrimental to all that space. But I thank Subaru Philippines for actually putting in a full-sized wheel with the same Michelin Pilot Sport tires wrapped here as a spare tire instead of giving us one of those fix-a-flat solutions or maybe a donut spare tire 
they gave us this full fat tire and I appreciate that. If you need even more space, you can fold those rear seats down. They fold really flat. It's gonna be difficult to do so. You can't fold those seats down from this location. You're gonna have to go all the way inside. Pull this tab right here to fold the seats forward. Push both of those buttons on each side and then pull the second row seats down. You have a flat floor. It's nice and spacious. And we're not gonna pretend that this is a two plus two vehicle anymore. It's a legit two seater with all this space in the back. It's gonna be difficult, but again, sports cars are not meant to be practical and comfortable, but at least it's trying to. Overall, the exterior of the Subaru BRZ is definitely awe-inspiring. Like I said, one of the criteria of owning a sports car should be because of the aesthetics. And the aesthetic of the Subaru BRZ is a knockout winner in my book. But let's take a look at the inside because a lot of things about the Subaru BRZ's interior has really been shifting towards a driver-centric feel. And uh, I'm really excited to show it to you guys inside the Subaru BRZ and I gotta say being ensconced inside this driver centric sports car is certainly a joy especially after reviewing a lot of crossovers a lot of crossovers and other crossovers hey we've been reviewing a lot of crossovers so sports cars are actually quite a nice change of pace so for starters you got this whole interior deck in black which is the way I like it because once you go black you never go back this is definitely one of the more sporty interiors I've ever been in you got a nice touchscreen infotainment system but more on that later I want to start with the material that's all right here on the uh, dashboard right here the door card the Subaru calls this ultra suede pretty it's pretty much just suede but like how Nike calls their new book dura book this is how they brand it and this is pretty grippy especially when you're driving around twisties and uh, it's not like you need it but you it is kind of helpful but because these seats they're really aggressively bolstered i mean look at this i'm just i'm just um in, in, in this tight subaru embrace the steering wheel is nice and uh, leather wrap it's adjustable for both reach and rake you got red stitching all around here, adding a little bit more to that sporty vibe. You got a digital gauge cluster in, in front here, giving you all the information that you need. You got your average uh, fuel consumption, your trip meter, your volt meter, and your oil temperature, which is pretty much appreciated. You even have a G meter right there because you will be using this for drifting, maybe. You got this huge um, manual handbrake, but this shifter kind of, Kind of gives you this feeling that you have a manual shifter on top, but uh, it, this, it's definitely a automatic. But right below it, you've got uh, full buttons right here. You've got traction control button. You've got a drive selector button for your uh, sport mode. You've got normal mode and snow mode. Why would you need snow mode? Because in other countries, it actually snows. Did you know that? But yeah, there we go. You've got this awesome button right here. Hold on to that button and you'll see the gauge cluster change from a normal tachometer to something that kind of is kind of akin to a, um, to a sports car right there. In fact, it doesn't give any credence to, to 2,000 or 4,000 RPM. It just goes straight up to 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 because it knows that's where you're going to be living, especially where you're on the track. But uh, let's turn that off right now because if you want to select that particular gauge screen, traction control will be off and trust me with this kind of car out on the city you don't want traction control off unless of course we well, want to pay an extra insurance premium you wouldn't want to do that do you anyway the screen this screen right here is classic Subaru it's got the uh, Subaru uh, icons right here kind of it's very colorful and too colorful for my taste uh, I think but at least it's this matte finish that I really appreciate I mean no matter what kind of smudginess you have on your fingers. It's not gonna stick there. It's gonna remain legible despite the harsh sunlight. And I really appreciate that. You got, uh, well, it's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can actually select different settings for your car right there. I like these uh, pedal shifters though, although they are clearly made of plastic, but at least they're very functional. And if you're getting the automatic, you're, uh, you're, you're in luck because this does have manual mode and those shifters make it easier to shift. Opting for the manual mode, you do lose the, um, uh, the drive select buttons here in the middle, but uh, 
remember your foot would be the uh, drive selector pedal so uh, you won't be needing that anyway all right it's pretty straightforward everything is uh, you can find everything that you need right here you got physical buttons for your uh, air conditioning it's right there it is dual automatic climate control uh, dual zone automatic climate control so if uh, your passenger is cool but you're hot you just cool yourself down and then they can um, increase the temperature just a bit you do have a uh, heated seats right here uh, the purpose for having heated seats it's not gonna be obvious but the reason why Subaru put it right there is because you're gonna look so cool driving the Subaru BRZ that you need to heat up just a little bit to uh, lower the cool level that you have all right straightforward again should I test the rear seats no I won't be testing the rear seats you can actually check out other channels for that no I, I will not no no <laughs> those seats by the way they also have isofix anchors so if you want to bring your if you're if you're a, if you're a new dad and you're just about to sell your brz at least you can put your at least you can put your kid your baby in the back right there all right now before we drive i want to check out one more thing I, it's really interesting that i want to show you guys before we head on out with this being a sports car it's worth to take a peek under the hood so lifting up this lightweight aluminum hood right here gives us a great view of the new 2.4 liter flat four boxer engine from Subaru. And this makes 230 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque, which is quite a significant jump from the previous generation BRZ. As you can see here, you can see the Toyota badge right there, as well as Subaru. This means this is co-developed by the two brands and it's definitely a beauty to behold right here. I mean, definitely he's got to, it's, it's a legit sports car, but like I said, sports cars are not meant just to be beheld, it's meant to be driven. So let's take this out for a spin. All right, so we're behind the wheel of the Subaru BRZ. And <laughs> like I said, that boxer engine is, a, is definitely a great upgrade from the previous generation's two liter uh, boxer engine. This time around, you get a 2.4 liter boxer engine instead of a 2.0. And that's pretty much the same uh, boxer engine that you can find in the Subaru Avaltis. But uh, this time around, it's not turbocharged and uh, it sounds great. Well, a lot of that has got to do with, of course, the pumped in audio that comes from uh, comes from Subaru's audio tuning and all that. I think upgrading your exhaust system and your intake system would be better than um, having to use all that sound, uh, well, that pumped in sound through the uh, speaker system, but that's fine. As a sports car, again, it's meant to be something that performs well and at the same time makes you feel stuff, makes you feel things. And I appreciate that at least they put in that particular type of feature that pumped in audio to work with because as, as it stands driving around in the Subaru BRZ especially uh, at low speed it doesn't really give you that the best sound ever especially when the sound doesn't really pump in just yet at low speed at least it gives it has a lot of road noise the tire noise especially something that permeates through the um, uh, through the cabin really badly so I guess at high speed in order to hide that fact they pump in that really nice sound and I like it it's a visceral sound that gives you emotions and you're driving something fast in this sports car and one thing that the BRZ has or Subaru claims has over the GRD6 is improved handling <laughs> and of course that engine you can hear the pumped in audio right there oh you can feel all 230 horses and 250 torques which is a great improvement over the previous generation but it's not really about all-out power with the brz in fact if it wanted to have all-out power it subaru could have had installed the turbocharger in there giving it bigger exhaust just like how subaru would make it you know quad exhaust twin turbos on the boxer engine but no the the purpose of building the brz was meant to be a classic roadster a classic sports car that would rival of course the mx5 this is a well-balanced well-tuned <laughs> sports car and i gotta say it's worth every penny 
if you're thinking or if your purpose is something to have fun in the weekends or maybe if you have a midlife crisis or quarter life crisis you can bring this every day and you will just feel happiness all right so let's do a quick acceleration test right here we're on sport mode and on manual mode the six speed automatic shifter may be a little bit too slow for me and we are right on this speed limit i love how this downshifts uh this downshifts in a really visceral manner it's like it's connected to your brain that way but the best thing that i love about this is the suspension i mean the suspension super touts that despite this being the twin sister of the gr86 the suspension parts are you know upgraded in a way i mean you've got improved suspension in the front and the back making it a little bit more pliable at the same time track worthy as well it's not gonna be as hard as let's say extreme uh, stage three coilovers or suspension setups but it feels like aftermarket it feels like it had, they super put some thought into the suspension instead of just you know slapping an oem one it is oem but it's not as safe it's not as nanny like as you would coming out of the showroom it it's, it looks like good out of the box as it is. But I'm sure you Subaru owners would want to modify this. You would want to modify this and it would, would be super fun to do so. Fuel economy in the Subaru BRZ is a surprise for me because you can get, with the horrible traffic that we have in Metro Manila, about 7.5 to 8 kilometers per liter. Sedan owners out there, especially those who own sedans from the 90s and early 2000s, you can ball your eyes out because a sports car from Subaru rear wheel drive two plus two seater and go from zero to 100 in just about six seconds does better fuel economy than our economy cars the world sometimes is not fair <laughs> but anyway out on the highway if you want to bring the Subaru out on the highway and if you drive uh, like a sane person you can get around 15 kilometers per liter, which is standard, which is fine, which is pretty much what you can find in normal 2.4, 2.5 liter engines out there. But just imagine, you've got a 2.4 liter engine that makes this much power, that much torque, in a car that's half the weight of many compact sedans. So you can imagine the power to weight ratio and the fuel saving uh, potential that you can get out of it. So again, if you drive like a sane person, there you go. The Subaru BRZ is a good economy car. When it comes to safety features, like I mentioned, this has Subaru's EyeSight technology. It's not the complete suite again, but at least it's functional. You've got multiple airbags, ABS, electronic brake force distribution, traction control, all the niceties I've got here. You've got a rear parking camera with a rear cross traffic alert. You do have adaptive cruise control, but not uh, low speed follow, you got lane departure warning, but not lane keep assist. Safety features are really secondary when it comes to purchasing a sports car. In fact, when you want to get a sports car, you want to make sure that you keep these electronic nannies at a bare minimum. And that's what we have in the BRZ. Pricing for the Subaru BRZ starts at 2,590,000 pesos for the manual transmission version and for the uh, automatic the six-speed automatic the one we're driving right now two million six hundred ninety thousand pesos this you really won't find any or that many that much competition for the subaru brz you've got the obvious one which is the which is its twin sister the uh, toyota gr86 and you got another one in the mazda mx5 the miata but uh, considering this over the miata you will have to Com you have a lot of compromises, especially when it comes to um, practicality and usability. But again, this is, sports cars aren't about practicality. Those things are just something extra when it comes to uh, making your purchase, uh, making your purchase worthwhile, that is. I think another option in the Subaru WRX sedan and WRX wagon might be a better choice. But if you ask me, those are no longer sports cars. But sports oriented uh, sedans and wagons you really want as a real sports car the brz is going to be tough to match 
So that's our review of the Subaru BRZ. It's one of the most well-balanced sports cars in the market today. And mind I say, one of the most affordable for its performance and its value offering. Right now, I can't imagine bringing any other car with any twisty roads other than the Subaru BRZ. That is until Mazda starts to put the gauntlet down and challenge this right here on Ziggles Philippines. So what do you think? You think that the BRZ has a great chance to st stand up against any of the sports cars in the market today, despite the price? Drop me a comment in the comment section down below. And while you're at it, subscribe to our channel. We really do appreciate all your likes and follows and hit that notification icon so you wouldn't miss any of our videos. This has been Roy Robles from ZigWheels.ph. I will see you guys next time.